Hi everyone, it's Rob here from Dartmoor Skies. Uh, Dartmoor Skies is a Buckfastly based astronomy outreach charity, so we want to inform and educate and excite people about the night sky. Um, we are based in Buckfastly, but we work across the entire southwest. Um, during lockdown, obviously, we've had to stop doing our events, so we're now very, very much Buckfastly based. Um, so yeah, we're, you're joining me in my garden tonight and I want to show you how to see Venus. Venus is so bright that it's visible in the daytime uh, but when it gets to sort of twilight times like this it'll become more and more apparent, it'll be really bright. So what you need to do to spot it is um, try and work out which way is west. So the sun sets in the west so at the moment if we look around our sky you'll see that um, some of it is brighter than others, so that's bright and that is dark. So the the remnants of the sunlight there, the remnants of the sunlight there are showing us which way is west, roughly. And that's all you need for Venus, because Venus is so bright that a rough idea of where it is is all you need. I've now changed the rear-facing camera of the phone. That's all we're filming on here. Nothing special, and you'll see a very bright speck. That's Venus. So you can see no other stars are out at the moment. Venus really is really, really bright, so it comes out much before the other stars. But it's a fantastic sight in, well, without any astronomy equipment at all. It's a fantastic sight, and with um, binoculars or a telescope you can see a bit more in Venus. That's what I'll now show you. So we're looking at Venus here through a telescope, but if you've got strong binoculars you might be able to see something like this. You see that it's a um, bit of a crescent shape. Uh, that It'll become an increasingly crescent shaped as we progress through April and May. So you'll see here that Venus is kind of shaking and shimmering and kind of dancing. That's um, that's because we're of Earth's atmosphere. Earth's atmosphere gets in the way and there's all these um, sort of air currents and there's turbulence in the atmosphere and that all contributes to the wobbliness. Um, there's a few things we want to show you about Venus. So first things first, we're going to go in orbit around the Sun. So I've done this because I'd like to show you what's happening here with Venus. Um, so here's our terrestrial planets in the Sun, and what's happening is um, Venus is coming around here between Earth and the Sun because it, it's kind of got the inside track. If it was like a racetrack, it's got a shorter circuit to take, so it, it overtakes Earth and goes on its merry way and um, when you're looking from this side of Earth this, these are things in the evening sky and then as you rotate uh, during sort of midnight you're looking opposite the Sun and then getting back towards the dawn sky. So what happens with Venus is that it goes from being an evening object to a morning object. So Venus is, Venus is both the morning star and the evening star. So I'm just going to animate this for a few days and we'll see Venus passing Earth. Like that. And then Venus here, it's going to stop it. You can see it's the opposite side of the Sun. This is when Venus is not really around to see, so it's really far away and the Sun's in the way, so it's, it's all a bit awkward. And then Venus will catch Earth up again, like that and it will overtake again too. Right, let's get back to Earth. So the key points to observe, to think about with Venus is that it's going to be changing. This is the crescent as it is tonight, 
on the date I'm recording this, which is April the 19th. You see it's um, it's past half illumination, isn't it? So it's still a noticeable crescent there. And if we go forward quite a few days, you'll see there that Venus got bigger and that that crescent got thinner. That's what's going to be happening over the next couple of weeks. So Venus, um, as it passes the Earth on that kind of inside track of the solar system, its distance from the Sun is going to get smaller. So if we go forward quite a few days, you see now that that distance has changed. It's shorter, so there's actually less time to enjoy Venus. Uh, we're looking in sort of mid-May now. And the, the, the rate at which Venus gets close to the Sun increases. So we go forward um, day by day now. You see that every day is advancing much closer. It also means that the it also means that Venus is going to get lost to the twilight. So we're on May the nineteenth um, in this view, and if we keep going forwards, I suspect we're going to lose Venus around here. I mean, it's certainly going to become less and less safe to view Venus through a telescope or binoculars because you definitely don't want to risk accidentally looking at the sun. Um, so yeah, now, the time to enjoy Venus really is from now, uh, which is uh, mid to late April. Venus has been brilliant for a few months now, but it's going to continue be, to be brilliant through until about mid-May, and then it's going to become uh, too close to view, and then it will pass into being a dawn object. Something else to look out for is that uh, if you can stay up late enough, you can see uh, as the stars come out, there'll be a very bright star above and to the right of Venus. And that bright star is called Capella, which is in this constellation here, which is called Auriga. Auriga is a charioteer sometimes, and other times he's a herdsman. And in this depiction, he's got his goats. The, the star Capella is very bright. I think it's... Um, it's in the top ten of stars uh, in the night sky, and just below it, the cool things to look out for is the are these three uh, stars shaped in uh, kind of a isosceles triangle shape. They're really nice, and they they have an asterism. They are sort of have a um, people have come up with a name for these, which is the kids. Quite distinct and visible with the unaided eye too. So. I hope you enjoy Venus and Auriga and Capella and the kids. And until next time, uh, take care.